Good time, Oldies 1060. Chuck O'Brien here. Our special guest this morning is Chuck Roberts, Vice Commander of American Legion Post 403 here in Rochelle, also the President of the Rochelle Veterans War Memorial Association, Commander of the 70th Tank Battalion, World War II Reenactment Group, and Operator of Roberts Armory World War II Museum in Rochelle. Served in the U.S. Army, Uh, between 1968 and 1970, has written a couple of great books on World War II history and several small pamphlets on military vehicle history. Uh, Chuck Roberts, and I'm the curator of Roberts Armory World War II Museum. Happy New Year. I uh, haven't seen you in a while. Well, thank you very much. Happy New Year to you. Thank you very much. Today we talk about the Battle of the Bulge. Just give us some general background on this battle. Okay, the Battle of the Bulge is really called the Ardennes Counteroffensive. In December 1944, the Germans were retreating on all fronts. The front line was along the border between Germany and the countries of Belgium, France, and Luxembourg. Hitler wanted to stop this advance with a desperate thrust toward the port of Antwerp in Belgium to divide the Allies and cut off their supply route. The plan was a huge gamble and that the Germans only had enough fuel to travel about halfway toward Antwerp. They assumed that they could capture Allied fuel supplies along the way, which would allow tanks and other vehicles to make it to Antwerp. The Germans amassed a large force in the Adens Forest in eastern Belgium with the intention of attacking a weak area in the Allied lines and drive toward the port of Antwerp and capture it. This area opposite the German force was lightly defended by American units. Allies were preoccupied with the attack plans and crossing the German border on other fronts. Intelligence did not detect the significance of the buildup because of the radio silence practiced by the Germans, the camouflage of the force from air observation, and the lack of reconnaissance units patrolling the Ardennes forest. American units in this area were newly trained, were without combat experience, or were resting from extensive deployment. They were tired out. Allied commanders did not believe that the German army would ever attack through such a dense force. Nevertheless, they did. Chuck, when did the battle uh, start? The battle started in December 16, 1944, and lasted all the way to January 25, 1945. The German code name for this operation was called Operation Watch on the Rhine. The Germans started with a 90 minute artillery barrage to soften up Allied lines. It was thought by the Allies that this was a localized counterattack to reverse recent advances by the Allies over the Siegfried Line. The Siegfried Line is the German defensive line near the German border. The weather was bad. A heavy snowstorm moved in. This was a mixed blessing for the Germans. The storm severely limited Allied air attacks, but also made it difficult for German vehicles to get through the snow. And what happened during the first phase? During the first phase, December 16, 1944, the Germans attacked toward the town of Bestone, St. V in Belgium, primarily in the American sector. The Allies thought this was a small counterattack. However, as the attack progressed, With many elite German divisions and the latest model of heavy tanks, it became obvious to the Allied command that it was a significant counteroffensive. The Germans made a huge bulge in the front line as they attacked, resulting in this battle being called the Battle of the Bulge rather than the Ardennes counteroffensive. Despite the lack of a defensive plan, American units, no matter how well armed or trained, stepped up and began to resist the onslaught. What was the, uh, the main focal point? The main focal point was the town of Bastogne and an area called Elzeborn Ridge. Bastogne was a central crossroads town on the way to Antwerp. The Germans had to capture this town in order to reach their objective. As American resistance increased, the German attack became behind schedule, slowed, and was eventually stopped at Bastogne and other towns. Despite being surrounded, the 101st Airborne Division under General McAuliffe was ordered to defend Bastogne, while the 82nd Airborne held off the SS Panzer Divisions at Elsenborn Ridge. The uh, other units involved was the 99th Infantry Division. 
When did the tide of the battle uh, turn in favor of the Americans? Meanwhile, General Patton, 3rd Army, disengaged from a winter battle to the south and turned north to relieve Bastogne. Patton knew that when there was a bulge in the line, it was easy to go behind the bulge and trap the enemy in a pocket. The 4th Armored Division of Patton's 3rd Army relieved Bastogne on December 26, 1944, essentially stopping the advance. The 82nd Airborne Division held off the German advance near Chenot in Belgium, and the 99th Infantry Division held off the Germans at Elsenborn Ridge. The German offensive began to fail as a result of fuel shortage, supply interruption, stiff American resistance, and improving weather, allowing Allied aircraft who had air superiority, the Allies had air superiority at this time, to attack German positions. Eisenhower wanted Patton to come from the south and Montgomery to come from the north and trap the Germans. However, Montgomery was cautious and delayed attacking from the north, resulting in many German troops escaping. By mid-January, many German vehicles were abandoned from lack of fuel, but the German army made a successful fighting withdrawal, reducing the bulge to the configuration of mid-December 1944. Now let's focus locally. Did any Rochelle residents participate in the battle? Yes, they did. Uh, Gerald Wine was a participant in the battle. He was a member of the 334th Infantry Regiment of the 84th Infantry Division in an anti-tank company engaging a large German armored column at the Ardennes Forest in December 1944. And he was wounded but survived the battle. My wife's uncle, George LeCare, was an infantry soldier in the 26th Infantry Division, which moved toward Luxembourg to hold off the German advance in the area and survive the battle. Er also, Pal Colwell had uh, a relative that was killed in this battle, and remains were fined just in recent years and returned to the States. Okay, very interesting. Uh, so what was the final result? The final result is the battle started on December 16th, 1944, and ended on January 25th, 1945. The American losses were 19,000 killed, 47,000 wounded, 26,000 missing. The U.S. lost over 700 tanks. The German losses were 12,000 killed, 38,000 wounded, and 30,000 missing. The Germans lost over 500 irreplaceable tanks and 500 soft-skinned vehicles, including armored vehicles. By the end of the January, the lines between Allies and Germans were roughly that of December 1944. The battle delayed Allied advances into Germany by several weeks. German forces were so depleted that this was the last major offensive by the enemy of World War II in Europe. At the end of it all, Winston Churchill declared that the Battle of the Bulge was American victory. The Battle of the Bulge was the bloodiest for U.S. forces in World War II. All right, Chuck. And th there we have it, the Battle of the Bulge in less than 10 minutes. <laughs> Can you believe that? I can't. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you're always welcome. Thank you. Okay. Thank very you. much.